Hey everyone, welcome back. This tutorial is going to go over how to animate textures. I'll go over some methods I've used and some I've seen used in different games. First method is a simple mix node. It's one of the easiest to set up for animation and probably my favorite. We'll use Gulliver's Eyes from Animal Crossing. You have your basic material with a normal painted on eye texture. Shift A to add a new image texture and you can paint a new eye texture. Add a mix node. Connect the second image texture. Now, this slider will change what texture is being used. You can keyframe this factor slider by hovering your mouse over it and clicking I. If you only have two textures, you can stop here and it's perfect. But if you have more, you can continue down the line doing this as many times as you want for as many different poses. You can make a material like this that controls both eyes at the same time or multiple materials to change the pose of each eye individually, and even another material for the mouth. You can animate as many textures as you need simultaneously. Now as cool as this is, it's going to be annoying to animate all of these mixed sliders. Add a math node, set it to greater than, and then you can use any number in this bottom slot. I used one for simplicity's sake. Connect the value output to the factor input. Add a value node, connect it to the math node. Duplicate this node with Shift D and connect it all up. Change the bottom value to whatever. I used two. Repeat the process. Now, this one value node can select all the textures, which makes keyframing much simpler. But it looks pretty messy, so select all these nodes with box select. Hit Ctrl G to make a node group and tab to exit the group. This is Blender's node equivalent to how faces are animated in the actual Animal Crossing games. They use many small textures and swap them out. We can clean up this node setup even further by adding a mix node, creating a group out of it and disconnecting everything. Go into the node tab over here, hit N if the side panel isn't up. Remove these color inputs and outputs. Now, delete this mix node entirely and connect the factor to the factor. Can tab out and into this node group whenever. Click the factor input and change the maximum to whatever you want it to be. I'll go with 6 for now. Now, I'll replace the input with the node group we just made, and that's method 1. I'm also going to be adding a math node in here real quick. Since 1 isn't greater than 1, now it will be. So now all I have to do is type in integers to change eye textures. Once you know what you're doing with nodes, you can set this stuff up however you want. The next method is something I've seen used in some of the new Pokemon games. Instead of many small textures, they have one large one with many alternate eye poses. In Blender, we can use a texture setup like this one by keyframing the location of our mapping node to slide the UV islands around. This is a pretty standard material setup. By default, we're at 0, 0, which is the upper left eye texture. By typing 0.25 into the Y location, it'll change to the bottom left texture, which seems odd at first, but because these textures are tiled, 0.25 just moves it up off the screen 25% of the way, so the UV wraps back around to the bottom. So then you just use this mapping node to switch through your options. Pretty simple, I still prefer method 1 to this as far as simplicity for keyframing. Here's another method I've seen used. Select your eye islands, shift D to duplicate. Drag them forward on the Y axis slightly, P to separate by selection. Select this new object and make a new eye material. It's important to use a texture with an alpha background. And then you just set up your UVs. And you can either set up this eye material, like the first example, or duplicate this eye object. And you have one stagnant pose on each object. And then you can just keyframe the object's render visibility. Not everything in Blender is keyframable, but almost everything is. I haven't found an easy way to use this method in Blender, but perhaps it'll be advantageous in some situations. I've seen it used in some of the Smash Bros games. These methods will work for animating literally anything. Hope this helps you all out in some way. Thank you for watching. Let me know if anything is confusing. Subscribe. I love you. Bye.